At the turn of the century, the Southwest signaled a major change in the portrayal of the Native American in art and photography. The center for the start of this change was the sleepy little village of Taos, New Mexico, and the Taos Pueblo. This is the oldest continuously occupied location in North America, going back between 1,000 and 1,450 years. The first Europeans to visit the region was a detachment of Spanish from Coronado's expedition in 1540 while searching for the seven cities of gold. In 1848, the Mexican-American War ended and Taos and New Mexico were ceded to the United States. The dramatic change in the view of Native Americans began in 1898 when two European-trained Eastern artists literally stumbled onto Taos. The story is legendary, both culturally and artistically. The two artists were Bert Phillips and Ernest Blumenschein. Their intent was to head for Mexico. The most celebrated breakdown in art history occurred when their wagon wheel broke outside of Taos. A day or two later, the wagon wheel was repaired and the two proceeded into town. They went no further, fell in love with the place, sold the wagon, found suitable space for a studio, and the first art colony in the entire Southwest got its start. Taos is the northernmost Pueblo in New Mexico and somewhat isolated and difficult to reach. After Phillips and Blumenschein's arrival, they spent a good portion of the year in Taos, but also in New York and other major centers to exhibit and sell their work. All the time, extolling the enchanting beauty in the location and the Native Americans living there. Gradually, other well-trained Anglo artists visited and developed strong ties to the region. In 1915, the Taos Society of Artists was formed with the six original founders. Here is a photograph of the six. When this first group of artists arrived, Taos had virtually no Anglos, no traditional artists, no galleries, and no market for their work. Sales had to come from faraway cities. This took a true measure of courage. There was a feeling of land and people unspoiled by Eastern civilization, but a sense of urgency to capture this way of life that will soon disappear. Looking at works by the original society members, Phillips and Blumenschein, Bert Phillips' work focused on the Taos Indian community, often depicted in natural settings, at peace, and one with nature. As seen here in title, Song of the Aspen, this is quintessential Taos painting. Many of the Taos artists were intrigued with the dignity expressed in the faces of the Taos Indians, and portraits like this stunning example. Ernest Blumenschein, was the other half of the duo who walked into Taos and started it all. This stunning work, entitled The Gift, reflects the often portrayed figure wrapped in either a white blanket, as seen here, or one of wonderful color and patterns. Blumenschein also fell under the spell of penetrating portraits, as seen in this image of a young man from the Pueblo. Blumenschein split his time between Taos and New York, where he taught at the Art Students League. He moved to Taos permanently in 1919. Joseph Henry Sharp was a devoted painter of Native American tribes, initially of the Plains Indians. Sharps had been commissioned by Teddy Roosevelt to paint 200 portraits of the Sioux and Crow, like this painting of the great Sioux war chief rain in the face. Sharp was authorized a studio on the edge of the Little Bighorn grounds by Roosevelt. Sharp returned to Taos and settled in in 1909. Sharp's specialty was figures seen inside their quarters, often bathed in light and shadow. This piece is entitled 
the story of the robe. The figures are recounting deeds of bravery depicted on the Buffalo Hide Robe. Sharp's early commitment to painting the Native Americans was captured in a simple statement. If I don't paint them, who will? The paintings of Irving Kaus were the most poetic of the original six members and perhaps contributed the most towards changing the public perception of the West and Native Americans. Many of his works depicted a crouching figure engaged in a variety of activities like this figure painting an image of what appears to be a casino. Kaus's work became possibly the best known of the artists because of commercial relationships that he developed. His paintings were used by the Santa Fe Railroad on their tremendously popular calendars. Seen here is a classic example and note the railroad seal in the upper left corner. This small pair of oil sketch proposals were submitted to the well-known Beacon Blanket Company as concepts for advertising their popular and authentic Indian blanket designs. William Buck Dunton arrived in Taos in 1912 and quickly became one of the six original founders. Dunton had already experienced the West, having hired out to trappers, hunters, and cattle ranchers. Dunton's preference was painting the life of the cowboy, more so than most of the earlier Taos artists. This stunning piece is entitled The Horse Rustler, painted in 1915. One of Buck Dunton's best-known works depicts a couple of cowboys hightailing it out of a dangerous summer squall storm. And in this wide open landscape, they can be dangerous, lightning with no place to hide. Oscar Burninghouse never attended formal art school. He was trained as a lithographer. Works like this scene in a heavily forested area make it hard to believe he had never painted in oil when he first arrived. Burninghouse's lithographer's eye is seen in his attention to detail, evident in this brilliantly colored work entitled In the Domain of Their Ancestors, painted in 1925. Burninghouse had a fondness for winter scenes, as depicted in this work. The pale light in the windows of the shack indicate that, well, at least the riders are warm. He did not suffer from lack of formal art training. Many brilliant second generation society artists and visiting painters whose work contributed mightily to the colony are worth noting. German-born Walter Ufer depicted here in his self-portrait while working at his easel and the figure posing for it standing behind him. The portrayal of the woman beside him with a very skeptical expression reveals a sense of humor on the artist's part. This masterpiece, entitled The Announcement, reveals Ernest Henning's preoccupation with design, light, and shadow. Here the patterns on the Indian's robes, vertical on the standing figure and horizontal on the dominant seated figure shape the compositions. Victor Higgins became increasingly influenced by aspects of modernism, practiced by artists like Marsden Hartley and John Marin. Over time, his focus shifted to landscapes. This image was a new and more modern way to interpret the landscape around the Sangre de Cristo Mountains. The artist Bert Proctor left his career as a Stamford-trained mining engineer after visiting Taos and produce work like this figure of a Taos man in brightly colored robes. Where else would the co-writer and star of Easy Rider, released in 1969, spend decades other than Taos? Dennis Hopper, the counterculture icon, acquired the house that Tony Luhan built, which he called the Mud Palace, filled it with his friends and had a decade-long party. 
the town learned to love him. Easy Rider is the de facto Taos film, and after his death in 2010, there's an annual Dennis Hopper Days Festival with an Easy Rider ride. Taos still thrives today, with 140 artists registered with the Taos Art Organization who live in the area and always more and more that visit, paint, exhibit, and probably leave wishing they lived here. In recognition of its importance as the oldest continuously occupied community in North America, Taos has been designated by the United Nations as a National Historic Landmark, along with sites such as the Vatican, Chaco Canyon, and the Great Wall of China.